What is a research briefing? Hello, I'm David Wilkinson, the editor of the Oxford Review, and I want to show you what you get when you download one of our research briefings. Now, the basic premise of the uh, of research briefings really is to take um, academic research and peer-reviewed research and turn it into human for practitioners. So what we do is we turn our research briefings into something that's quick to grasp and fast to understand, that it's understandable and clear, that it's above all useful and practical to practitioners out in the field, and that it's the latest research, so it's bang up to date, so you get the latest research and thinking. Now, most peer-reviewed articles are long. There are pages and pages and pages of them. They're complicated, they're difficult to understand, they tend to be written in academic for other academics and they're certainly not written for practitioners and mere mortals who are actually in organisations or consultancies trying to actually do things. They tend to be long, involved and detailed and rarely are they practical. Now our research briefings on the other hand take all of that and turn them into a few pages of concise, brief practical and understandable research that's useful to you out in the field. So let's have a look at what's involved in a research briefing. So the first thing is a descriptive title so that you know exactly what the research briefing is about because we don't want to be wasting anybody's time. We also want to make it easy for people to be able to access the stuff and find what they need, which is one of the problems with academic research. Unless you've got hours and hours and hours and access to an academic library, you've got a real problem. The descriptive title puts you on track really quickly. And to back that up, we also now include keywords for every research briefing so that you know exactly what this particular briefing is about. Then what we do is we do a, an introduction and a catch up so that you've got context for the research and you understand where it's come from and an overview of the research um, and how it was conducted. We also include any previous research. Now this may be previous research that has informed the actual peer-reviewed research that we're reviewing, or it may be some other extant research that we know that exists that will be useful and really helps to contextualize th this briefing. Then what we do is we have a quick look at who the researchers are and where they're from and we include also any charts, figures, graphs and things like that that will really help you to understand what the models are and what the research was about in one easy go and quite often quite a lot of our readers turn to those first. And then as well as the findings we give you the practical implications of those findings and that's an important part of these research briefings because they're aimed at the practical so that you can actually do something with them. We also include full references. That's firstly so that you can go off and get the actual research paper if you want to, if you're that way inclined or you're doing your own studies, but also if you want to reference um, the research in your own presentations, in blog posts, in reports and things like that, then it's easy to do. You can just cut and paste it from there and you've got the full references and also it just looks good. At least you know that you've got, you know, you're citing your sources. And then lastly, we give you a, a very brief, shortened executive summary of what the actual research is saying. And that includes any explanatory uh, diagrams that we've created, really just to bring the whole time frame down so that it's really, really fast. If you've got, if you're really short of time, you can just turn to the last page and the executive summary is on there and you're good to go. Research briefings from the Oxford Review. Fast, clear, up to date and practical.